Gustave Courbet was a French painter who led the realism movement in 19th century French painting. Committed to painting only what he could see, he rejected academic convention and the romanticism of the previous generation of visual artists. His independence set an example that was important to later artists, such as the Impressionists and the Cubists. Courbet occupies an important place in 19th century French painting as an innovator and as an artist willing to make bold social statements through his work. Courbet was born in eastern France, the son of Eleanor Regis, a prosperous farmer, and Sylvie Courbet. After attending both the Collège Royal and the College of Fine Arts at Besançon, he went to Paris in 1841, ostensibly to study law. He devoted himself more seriously, however, to studying the paintings of the masters in the Louvre. Father and son had great mutual respect, and, when Courbet told his father he intended to become a painter rather than a provincial lawyer, his father consented, saying, if anyone gives up, it will be you, not me, adding that, if necessary, he would sell his land and vineyards and even his houses to help his son. Freed from all financial worry, young Courbet was able to devote himself entirely to his art. He gained technical proficiency by copying the pictures of Diego Velázquez, José de Ribera, and other 17th-century Spanish painters. In 1844, when he was 25, after several unsuccessful attempts, his self-portrait Courbet with a black dog, painted in 1842-44, was accepted by the Salon, the only annual public exhibition of art in France, sponsored by the Académie des Beaux-Arts. When in the following years the jury for the Salon thrice rejected his work because of its unconventional style and bold subject matter, he remained undaunted and continued to submit it. The revolution of 1848 ushered in the Second Republic and a new liberal spirit that, for a brief while, greatly affected the arts. The Salon held its exhibition not in the Louvre itself but in the adjoining galleries of the Tuileries. Courbet exhibited there in 1849, and his early work was greeted with considerable critical and public acclaim. In 1849 he visited his family at Ornans to recover from his hectic lifestyle in Paris and, inspired again by his native countryside, produced two of his greatest paintings, The Stonebreakers and Burial at Ornans. Painted in 1849, The Stonebreakers is a realistic rendering of two figures doing physical labor in a barren rural setting. The Burial at Ornans, from the following year, is a huge representation of a peasant funeral, containing more than 40 life-size figures. Both works depart radically from the more controlled, idealized pictures of either the neoclassical or the romantic school, they portray the life and emotions not of aristocrats but of humble peasants, and they do so with a realistic urgency. The fact that Courbet did not glorify his peasants but presented them boldly and starkly assaulted the prevailing conventions of the art world. Courbet, an intimate of many writers and philosophers of his day, including the poet Charles Baudelaire and the social philosopher Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, became the leader of the new school of realism, which in time prevailed over other contemporary movements. One of the decisive elements in his development of realism was his lifelong attachment to the traditions and customs of his native province, the French Comté, and of his birthplace, Ornans, one of the most beautiful towns in the province. After a brief visit to Switzerland, he returned to Ornans, and in late 1854 he began an immense canvas, which he completed in six weeks, the artist's studio, an allegory of all the influences on Courbet's artistic life, which are portrayed as human figures from all levels of society. Courbet himself presides over all the figures with ingenuous conceit, working on a landscape and turning his back to a nude model, a symbolic representation of academic tradition. When the painting was refused by the jury for the 1855 Universal Exposition, Courbet, with the financial support of a friend, opened his own pavilion of realism to exhibit his works in a site close to the official exposition. The enterprise failed, the painter Eugène Delacroix alone, in his journal, 
praised the audacity and talent of Courbet. In 1856 Courbet visited Germany, where he was warmly welcomed by his fellow artists. Three years later, at the age of 40 and still working in defiance of severe criticism in his own country, he was the undisputed model for a new generation of painters who had turned away from the traditional schools of painting, which they considered only barriers to artistic inspiration. Courbet worked in all genres. A lover of women, he glorified the female nude in paintings of stunning warmth and sensuality. He executed admirable portraits, but above all he celebrated the French Comte, the forests, springs, rocks, and cliffs of which were immortalized by his vision. In 1865 he set up his easel before the cliffs of Etretat, Deauville, Troville, and other resorts fashionable during the Second Empire. Carefully observing air currents and storm skies, he successfully depicted the architecture of a tempest in a series of seascapes. These pictures were an extraordinary achievement that amazed the world of art and opened the way for Impressionism, which was to achieve an even greater sensuousness by reproducing the color and light reflected by an object rather than its strict linear shape. The Franco-German War broke out in 1870, the Second Empire collapsed, and the Third Republic was proclaimed. On March 18, 1871, the Republican Paris Commune was established to fight the Germans in France as well as to fight the army of Versailles, which had remained loyal to Napoleon III and had concluded an armistice with the Germans that the members of the Commune judged to be dishonorable. Courbet, who had been recently elected president of the Artists' Federation and was charged with reopening the museums and organizing the annual Salon, took part in the revolutionary activities of the Commune. Instead of opening the museums, he decided to protect the major public monuments, especially the Sevres Porcelain Factory and the Palace at Fontainebleau, for Paris had been under constant bombardment by the Germans. Alarmed by the excesses of the Commune, he resigned May 2nd. The Commune had voted to destroy the column in the Place Vendôme commemorating the Grand Army of Napoleon Bonaparte, and it carried out the decision on May 16. But on May 28 the Commune was crushed by the Army of Versailles, and on June 7 Courbet was arrested at the home of a friend. Because he was thought to have been responsible for the demolition of the column, he was brought before a military court. As he had often made known his disgust of the militarism represented by the monument, he was charged with having been the instigator, although he had in no way participated in its destruction. A scapegoat was needed, and Courbet was arbitrarily chosen, despite his protests and those of the persons actually responsible for the demolition, who had fled to England. He was sentenced to six months in prison, and, thanks to the intervention of Adolf Thiers, head of the provisional government of the French Republic, he was given a minimum fine of 500 francs. He served his sentence first at the Saint Pelagie prison, and, when he became seriously ill, he was moved to a clinic near Paris. Once freed, he hastened to Warnens in the hope of regaining his strength. When Thiers resigned in 1872, the Bonapartist deputies reopened Courbet's case and sued him for the cost of rebuilding the column. His entire personal property and all his paintings were seized, and he was fined 500,000 gold francs. Having no alternative but to leave France because he could not pay the fine, he crossed the border into Switzerland on July 23, 1873, and settled in the small town of Fleurier. He set to work again, but, feeling unsafe so close to France, he first went to Vevey and then to La Tour de Pales, where he bought an old inn, appropriately named the Bon Port. There he died at the age of 58, physically and morally exhausted. Courbet's reputation has continued to grow since his death. His detractors often judge his art only on the basis of his socialism, ignoring the fact that his political beliefs grew out of his generosity and compassion. His work, however, exerted much influence on the modern movements that followed him. He offered succeeding generations of painters not so much a new technique as a whole new philosophy. The aim of his painting was not, 
as previous schools had maintained, to embellish or idealize reality but to reproduce it accurately. Courbet succeeded in ridding his painting of artistic clichés, contrived idealism, and time-worn models.